The friendly cities of London and St. Thomas play host to the 1974 McDonald Breyer Canadian Curling Championship. With a color guard from the Royal Canadian Regiment carrying our nation's flag, the opening ceremonies get underway at the London Gardens. For any Breyer curler, this opening march down the ice has got to be his greatest thrill of the curling year. General Chairman George Parks welcomes everyone to this great Canadian sports classic. Canadian Curling Association President Bill Curry holds the broom as Ontario's Premier William Davis delivers the opening rock. Sweepers Don Gilbert and Ken Buchan, former Ontario Briar Skips, watch the stone as it comes in to hit the button. Of course, there are bits of business like exchanging pins and checking the ice. The rinks are ready to go, and here is Frank Williams. Thank you, Jack Wells. In this fifth end, Alberta leads Saskatchewan 1-0 and lays one as Heck Gervais attempts to set up a guard on his shot rock. And the Gervais magic is still working. The stone comes in to plug any chance of an outturn draw or take up. Larry McGrath curls out of Kindersley, Saskatchewan, and he's making his first briar appearance. He must come through the port and try to move those Alberta stones around. He's wide and pushes the Alberta guard through the house. Alberta still lays one. Playing in his fourth briar, Heck decides to go for one of his specialties, the Rays. He skims by the guard. And how about that? It's now conference time for McGrath and the three St. John brothers who make up his rink. Pow pow, says Larry. We'll go for the triple Rays. Well, Jack, what do you think of that? What do I think? Well, I think the big man from St. Albert is going to steal a couple of points. Let's watch this. See, Larry is narrow. He's wrecked up on the guards. And Alberta is ahead by three big ones. And they stayed ahead to defeat Saskatchewan eight to four. British Columbia and Manitoba are tied three all in this seventh end with the West Coast rink lane two. BC skip Jim Armstrong wants to plug up the front to keep Manitoba from drawing to the four foot. He looks heavy and is. Slides to the back of the house to lay three, but leaves the house wide open. Manitoba skip Don Barr doesn't waste any time on this one. The outturn is on its way. The ice is very keen at this point, and he looks a little heavy. But the stone holds up for shot at the back of the four foot. Armstrong must follow Barr's shot and try to chip it out and stay. Manitoba has last rock. The BC stone hangs out, but gets a piece of the Manitoba rock and rolls to lay one. There's only one shot for Barr to play, and so again he goes with the out turn. There's a potential two points if he hits on the inside. But he too hangs up. Gets the hit but has to settle for a single. Manitoba goes ahead 4-3 after 7 8 Well, Jack, Manitoba's gone ahead in this game. How about a rundown on this rink from Glenborough? 
Frank, you know, to get out of Manitoba and come to the Briar, Rink's got to have all the shots. Take the pressure when it's on. Don Barr and his boys have a lot of experience, but believe me, this British Columbia rink isn't giving anything away. So Manitoba's going to have to curl well to win. Well, they just made the takeout to lay one, so let's see what happens. Armstrong throws the out to The sweepers leave it alone, and BC makes the hit, but is wide and rolls out. They now lay two. The possible double takeout is a tempting sight, and with all that granite out front, the hit and roll is the call. Barr delivers the out turn. And as you said, Jack, they've got all the shots. That was a fine shot, there's no question about it. But Jim Armstrong still has most of the house to draw into. He's got to go with the out turn, but anywhere around the eight foot, and we'll have a tie game. I think the rock has lost its turn, Frank. And BC pulls up short of this house to let Manitoba steal one and go ahead five to three. They win eight four. Heck, Gervais favored Albertans have been tested all the way by John Clark's rink from New Brunswick. Tied six all in this 12th end with Skip's Rocks to come, Gervais plays a dangerous shot through a port to get protection from a short guard. But the big man is wild and raises a maritime stone in for shot. What did you think of that, Jack? You know, Heck's a gambler. With Last Rock against him, he knows that he's got to hide one now. He can make that kind of a shot, but he was just a little wide. Maybe a shade heavy, too. The only thing he can be sure of now is, I guess he's in real trouble. Yeah. The Frederick to drink hasn't been making any mistakes in this game, and John Clark wants that second stone in there. He taps his shot rock back and stays for the two. Ron Anton, who helped Gervais win it all way back in 1961 in Calgary, calls for the hit and roll. They've got to hide one on the edge of the four foot. But Heck is narrow. Draws for a shot, but is wide open. A hit on any part of that red stone will give New Brunswick a big upset win over Alberta. Clark has been sharp all through this game and doesn't intend to blow it now. He doesn't, and New Brunswick defeats Alberta 8-6. Now let's join Bill Good as he talks with a winning stick. Well, John Clark, uh, those maritime rinks of which you are one have had great success against prairie rinks down through the years, but it's usually Nova Scotia that had all well, the big success. That's true, but uh, maybe maybe it's New Brunswick's turn uh, this time. Well, you know that last mm -hmm. rock of yours that looked for just a moment as though you were a little wide or a little heavy. Yeah, I was on the broom, but I, uh, when it started coming into the house, I, uh, I lost track of it because of so many legs, and uh, I thought, well, maybe it was through, but uh, I guess it, it curls in there pretty good, and it, it worked out fine. Well, congratulations. It was a great shot and a great victory. Thanks very much. If you're wondering what Heck Jervey thought of the game, listen to this. We uh, played against a guy that never missed a shot, and uh, I think if we play another guy that missed a shot, we're going to lose the game. Uh, you just can't uh, beat uh, somebody who's playing perfect. The score is 7-all in the ninth end of this game between Northern Ontario and Quebec. John Chucker Ross of Sudbury is laying one as he goes for the Quebec second stone. The weight looks good. And he comes in to tap Quebec back and lay two. Jack, Jim Ursel, the Quebec skip, is from your part of the world. What's his record? Well, uh, Jimmy Ursel's a very fine curler, Frank. He was with Norm Houck, you may recall, back in 1962 at the Briar in Kitchener. They wound up in a three-way tie with Heck Gervais and Ernie Richardson, and that's pretty classy company. Ursel's played in most of the big ones out in the West, 
For that matter, so is Bill Ross, the Quebec third, and his second, Alf Berting. Berting, he's from Regina. The only native Quebecer on this rink is the lead, Freddie Top, and from what I've seen, he throws a pretty good lead rock. They're gonna be tough to beat, Frank. Of course, this guy, Chuck Ross, is no pushover. No, he's lying one right now and wants to set up a guard. Front end, keep the ice clean. And that's about as good as you can get it. It looks like Ursel's going for a double raise at this point, Jack. Why not an outturn draw to the forefoot? Yeah, I don't know, Frank. And maybe he feels he can hit better than he can draw with the outturn. Let's wait and see. Well, Northern Ontario steals one to go ahead, 8-7. Quebec is laying four with Skip's Rocks to come in the 12th end. Northern Ontario leads 9-8, but with Last Rock against him, Chuck Ross must go for the free. The ice is kept clean, but Ross is narrow. Rubs a Quebec stone to roll shot on the button. The idea here is to chip the white rock out. Ursel leans on the out turn. He gets the shot rock and rolls up. Quebec lays four. Ross still needs that freeze. The brooms pick it up right away. But he's light. Cuts Ursel down to two points, but that's enough for Quebec to win the game without throwing their last one. Final score, 10-9. Paul Savage has skipped the Ontario entry in three briars. Right now, he trails Newfoundland 7-5 in this ninth end. The young southpaw from Scarborough is three and three at this point in the Canadian Curling Championship and has to get something going in this end. He raises a short guard in to lay one. The Newfoundland rink, skipped by Fred White, is making its first appearance at the Briar and is still looking for its first win. White makes the takeout and rolls shot. Savage has been up and down all through this Briar, Jack. You any idea what's wrong? Well, the Maritimers have been giving him a real rough time. He lost to Prince Edward Island and Nova Scotia and then turns around and hammers Manitoba and B.C. Whips New Brunswick, but loses to Northern Ontario. This has got to be a crucial game for Paul if he hoped to do anything about it here at London. And I guess that's not the way to do it, Frank. No, you're dead right. Fred White is after anything he can get. A single at this point will give him a big three-point edge going into the tenth. He nearly slides through the house. But Newfoundland does go ahead 8-5 to five and defeat Ontario 11-10. You know, Frank, next to beating the heavy guns from the West, which they do on a pretty regular basis, these Maritimers seem to get their biggest kicks out of beating each other. This game between Prince Edward Island and Nova Scotia is no exception. Because here they are all tied up at 5-all in the 11th. The Islanders are shot. And here's Bobby Dillon trying for two. Gets it. Well, that puts the pressure right back on Barry Shearer from the Halifax Curling Club.
Both of these rinks have had a lot of exposure at the briar and can make the shots when they have to. The Nova Scotia skip has a pretty good target and let's go. It's bending nicely and Nova Scotia pulls ahead 6-5, hitting into the 12th end. PEI has the only rock in the house, but Shearer intends to change all that. He lets a boomer go. Buddy hits on the wrong side and rolls out. Bobby Dillon has an empty house to draw to, and the seven-time island champion elects the out turn. The sweepers bring it into the 12 foot to lie shot. With last rock against him, Barry wants to hit on the inside and roll for protection. He delivers. Oh! Oh! But when you're heavy and wide, you've just got to miss. Any part of the house will wrap it all up for PEI. Dylan throws. The front end works, and Prince Edward Island counts two to defeat Nova Scotia. Final score, 7-6. Okay, Jack, we're heading into the last regulation game. What are the magic numbers? <laughs> oh, there's lots of them, Frank, lots of them. You see, if Quebec knocks off Alberta and Ontario whips Saskatchewan, then we've got a three-way playoff between Alberta, Saskatchewan, and Quebec. But if Alberta and Saskatchewan both win their games, there'll be a two-way playoff. However, if Saskatchewan wins and Alberta loses, McGrath wins it all. On the other hand, besides Warts, if Gervais wins, the Saskatchewan lose, then the Jolly Green Giant wins his second briar. Now, you got all that? Well, maybe if you just run it through again. <laughs> Forget it. Let's watch the action. Okay. Saskatchewan is shot at his third end, and Ontario skips Paul Savage, wrecks and rolls in front of the house. Ron St. John calls for a stone behind the short guard. The delivery is made. All the St. John brothers pound the ice, but McGrath is light and doesn't make the hump. Savage is going for the hit and roll. A point stolen here could be very big indeed. The entire Ontario rink has been curling very well right from the opening rock. And Savage keeps the pressure on with a brilliant shot. Ontario lays one. So it comes down to the shot every good skip must have. The cold draw to the forefoot. McGrath throws. And again, the brothers St. John go to work. A real team effort. The result, Saskatchewan counts one to tie it all up after three ends. Ontario lays one and is well protected as we come to Skip's Rocks in the fourth end. McGrath goes with the out turn. But he's narrow and wrecks. Ontario lays one. With last rock, Savage feels confident of picking up at least two points here in the fourth. He hasn't been missing a thing.
And he continues to show fine form with a small tap back to lay two. As it was in the previous end, the pressure is right back on McGrath. The shot is there if his weight is right. But again, he's narrow and wrecks and rolls wide, giving Ontario a chance to steal a big three-ender. With the opportunity to get a big jump on the Saskatchewan rink, Savage doesn't fool around. The weight is perfect, and Ontario picks up three. They lead 4-1 after four in. While Ontario seems to be getting the measure of Saskatchewan, Alberta and Quebec are having a great game on the next sheet. Playing in the eighth, the score is one all, and they blanked five of the seven previous ends. With two rocks to come, Alberta is laying one, and Jim Ursel is after the freeze. But he's a shade wide and slides to get the biter at the back of the house. Heck now has a chance to pick up a pair with his last rock. The big man doesn't miss too many like this. And it's in there and Alberta gets the first big break to jump into a three to one lead after eight ends of play. Quebec's Jim Ursel asks third Bill Ross to hide his last rock behind the guard. It's the 12th end. Ross delivers. The weight looks good, but the rock isn't bending. It's in there, but a sitting duck for Alberta's Ron Anthony. Anton has always been considered one of the finest thirds in the game. And this is why. The takeout with a small roll, and Alberta is shot. Ursel has a big problem. Trailing 3-2, and with last rock against him, he has to hide. But he's narrow and raises Alberta onto the bucket. It's the old chip and roll call by Anton. Yep. Heck gets the hit, but rolls up. The major problem hasn't changed for Ursula. It's 250 pounds named Heck Gervais. Plus, Jim still needs the freeze. The payoff rock. Everybody works. Maybe a little too hard. Ursel taps the Alberta rock back a few inches, and Quebec lays one. Gervais wants to chip that red stone out of there. He can afford to roll out or clean the house, so the pressure isn't on. He makes the shot and counts one to defeat Quebec 4-2. While the boys are shaking hands, Jack Wells is standing by to have a word with Heck.
It's taken you a long time to repeat, but you knocked off that old adage, they never come back. The last time you won the Briar was 1961. Well, Jack, it's uh, it's probably a good way to finish up uh, your career of curling. And, uh, of course, it's not quite over here yet. No. But, uh, but uh, it, uh, if we're fortunate to win, it's, uh, it's going to be quite a, quite a thrill for me because I you don't expect to come back when you get close to 40, and that's what I am. And I had a real good team. The guys feel well, and I'm just glad I kept my end of it. While Gervais was winning against Quebec, Ontario has gone into a two-point lead over Saskatchewan. With Skip's Rocks to come in the 12th end, McGrath is shot. Savage is after the draw to the four-foot. But he's narrow and almost raises the Saskatchewan Rock in for a second shot. McGrath needs protection, plus getting a second rock in there to tie it all up and force an extra end. He's heavy and slides back, and may be lane two. He must have two because Savage is throwing his last rock. The Ontario skip just needs to push either of those white stones back and it's all over for Saskatchewan. He gets it and Alberta wraps up the 1974 Canadian Curling Championship. Well, I thought you played a magnificent shot in this game here against uh, uh, Curse all the day to win this one. And uh, what were your thoughts when you were getting down that hack? You had to play that chip out and, and get your one. Well, Jack, it was, I didn't really think too much. I was just uh, hoping I wouldn't get wide on it. And uh, the ice stayed pretty straight there. And if I was somewhere close to the room, I, I could have hit it on the nose or, or uh, on the inside. Just wanted to hit it on the wide side. And uh, I was fortunate I got by. And congratulations to you and your ring. Thanks very much, Jack. Hector Bay. The RCR Honor Guard lead the 1974 Canadian Curling Champions from Alberta and the runners up from Saskatchewan to the dais. David M. Stewart, president of McDonald Tobacco, congratulates the winners and then presents the Briar Tanker to skip Hector Bay, third Ron Anton, second, Warren Hanson, and lead, Darrell Sutton. Worthy champions of Canada's major curling event. of the 1974 McDonald Briar, brought to you by Export A, the big one. <laughs>